Almost every day during the winter, people will walk into our shop here at Harlow looking for advice on how to keep warm. As most of us here ride to work every day, all year round, we have lots of personal experience when it comes to taming the elements. There are a few tricks to keeping warm on a bike, but the basic rules are to be well insulated, well windproofed, and to stay dry. I've been riding all year round since the 80s, so I understand the basics and maybe some of the secrets. Let's have a look at some of them here for you now. We'll start at the top with the neck. This is an important area as you have lots of blood vessels close to the surface and it can be a massive area of heat loss. So it's worth taking the time to make sure you get a good seal around your jacket and of course under your helmet. There are a lot of good neck warmers on the market which are functional and unobtrusive. I prefer something like this, the Oxford Snug. It's got a thermal area at the base there but it's nice and thin on the top half so that you can turn it into a balaclava under your helmet. Unlike a regular balaclava, it can be worn around the neck, off the bike, and in a couple of quick twists, it can also make an emergency beanie. These are also great for the ski slopes and make a great present for the rider, or indeed the skier, in your life. For the torso, I'd recommend multiple thin layers underneath your outer jacket. They're a great way to keep warm without having to bulk up too much, as that can obviously restrict movement, and doing the whole Michelin Man thing on a bike is never a good look. Quality base layers from companies like DXR, RST, Oxford are a great place to start. Some people will actually wear a couple of these underneath to keep their core extra warm. Synthetic layers are better than cotton ones as they will wick away the moisture. Cotton ones absorb the moisture, which leaves you feeling cold and clammy all the time. For people who really feel the cold, and for those who are out and about all day, and for those who just like being really snug, the ultimate way of keeping warm is a heated vest, or indeed a heated jacket. One of the reasons your hands and feet get so cold is that the body is protecting your vital organs so it draws heat away from the extremities to warm up the bits inside the torso. That's why a heated top will not only help keep your top half warm, but also your hands and your feet. There are quite a few on the market, some powered by a lead from your bike, some powered by batteries. Some can use both with the battery ones, you can obviously stay warm off the bike as well. You probably already have a waterproof textile jacket and matching trousers, but if you don't, then they're very well worth investing in. Leather is great when it's dry, but it can't beat breathable textile gear for warmth when the going gets tough. The waterproofing quality of leather leaves a lot to be desired as well. If you've ever got caught out in a one piece in the rain, you'll know what I mean. Another thing to keep in mind is that wet skin loses heat around 25 times faster than dry skin, which is why keeping dry in the cold is so important. If you're planning on riding all year round, look for a jacket with lots of adjustable straps, zips and poppers to allow for growth with the extra layers. Most of the jackets and trousers we sell also have removable warmth liners inside them so they become more usable all year round. Ideally you want a full length connecting zip to join the jacket to the trousers. This helps keep the drafts and water out and because also a grown man showing a muffin top should be an imprisonable offence. Rarely if ever do the two manufacturers share the same zip so if you're buying both from scratch it's best to go with the same brand. The same applies if you're looking at buying a top or a bottom to match what you already have. Go with the same brand it should all match up for you. It's harder to layer up the lower half of your torso. A thin base layer under your trousers is usually all there is room for. Knee armour can also make for a useful wind barrier. As with the torso, you can bring in electrical assistance with heated trousers, which are designed to work under your existing garment if you really feel the cold. You also cheat with heat for your feet, and unsurprisingly, we have a great range of heated socks, heated insoles, sorry, no heated boots. A simple pair of waterproof boots like these can be had for about 90 pounds. All waterproof boots use a membrane to keep the water out, which helps keep you dry and therefore warmer. Membranes also have a windproofing element to them. The best and most well-known membrane is Gore-Tex. It breathes better than anything else, so it keeps the cold, clammy sweat out, which in turn keeps you warmer as there's less skin cooling. So once you've layered, fleeced and sealed up, you need to secure your hands against the cold, and this is the real toughie, gloves. Genuine Gore-Tex gloves are the best at avoiding sweaty, clammy hands, but there are a lot of decent quality budget gloves on the market these days, so you have lots of options. The rule of thumb with gloves is that the thicker is warmer, so you have more thermal layers, but with thickness, you sacrifice feel. We get asked all the time for warm glove with lots of feeling. I'm afraid the simple fact of life is there's no such thing as a thin, warm glove. One good option are these two fingered ones, as there is less surface area exposed to the cold and your fingers can huddle together for warmth. Heated gloves are another popular option. We have both battery and bike powered models to choose from. Like everything else though, they may not work for everyone, especially as they're not the cheapest thing on the market, but they can make a massive difference to your daily ride. Heated grips are easier, 
cheaper and they've been around for many years. In fact, most manufacturers offer them as an option on new models. One from the Marmite collection, handlebar muffs. Some people can't bear to be without them. Some people will happily suffer the cold rather than use them. The simple truth is they're very effective, especially if you're out in the cold all day long. The way it works is that if it's zero degrees outside, then at 60 miles an hour, you're dealing with a wind chill factor of minus nine degrees Celsius. That's serious brass monkey territory. With muffs, it means you're only battling the ambient temperature inside the muff. The other great advantage with muffs is that they're waterproof, which can pay big dividends if you're using heated grips, as gloves can get wet from heated moisture going through the waterproof membrane. Scientifically, it's a process known as reverse osmosis. Realistically, it's a process known as a pain in the fingertips. In fact, some couriers use fingerless gloves with heated grips and muffs because it gets the grip heat straight to their fingers. The hands feel warmer because there's a thinner barrier stopping the heat from the grips getting to the hands and the muffs stop the heat from being dragged off the back of them. Another pain in the fingertips is the constant braking and clutch demands placed on a commuting rider. Obviously, it's impossible to keep your fingers away from those icy cold levers, especially in traffic. The only solution I've found for this is Oxford lever sleeves, which are foam rubber sleeves for your levers. They can be a very tight fit though, especially on thicker levers, so look at them very carefully before trying to put them on. Another one from the Marmite collection of these, inner gloves. Some people swear by them, others swear at them. Yes, it's another layer, but personally, they don't work for me. I think they add an uncomfortable thickness to the glove and they push out the air that's keeping you warm in the first place. However, there's lots of people who swear by them, so they may well work for you. Thin silk or thin synthetics are best, just avoid the cheap fake woolen ones from Brick Lane. So, that's how I've been keeping warm on the road for more years than I care to reminisce about. As with anything motorcycling, it's whatever works for you. There's certainly plenty to choose from, and I hope you've picked up some tips that'll help you keep you comfortable on the road this winter. See you out there.